What's going on, everybody? Look, I'm wearing a green shirt, so I'm transparent. I'm transparent. Hey, this is Chuck. You're watching the ITXP. <sighs> trying to get into this cadence of where you'll continue seeing episodes. And this is an interesting year. Yesterday, uh, yesterday, last time I talked about the layoff situation that's going on in 2024 that started in 2023 and even before that, but really picking up steam UPS announced 12,000 layoffs and folks are, are concerned. I, I believe me, I, I understand their concerns and, and I, I feel for you. If you hadn't listened to the episode uh, prior to this, please listen to it because it gives you some insight into my experiences in, in being laid off and how I dealt with it and what I feel folks should start doing to to get themselves back on their feet to move forward. What I want to talk today about is once you get on your feet, get a job, start thinking about working multiple jobs. Now in tech, everybody's talking about it. I've seen it on the various boards, and I'm going to talk through this a little bit just to understand whether or not this is something for you, because it's not for everybody. Uh, multiple jobs. If you're an old fart like me, you'll remember the show In Living Color. And then there was this, I believe it was either Jamaican or Haitian family um, where Damon Wayans was there and all the Wayans family. And they were talking about how many jobs they were working. It was like, yo, you work 15 jobs. You're lazy, right? I work 22 jobs and things like that. So multiple jobs, having multiple jobs at one time um, is something that people have been doing for years. Corporate America seems to poo poo on it for whatever reason. And we've been in this mindset. It's like, Oh, I have this corporate job and now uh, I'm good. I should be loyal, blah, blah, blah. And we now know with these layoffs, nobody's loyal to anyone. So everybody's talking about this overemployed mindset. And I wanted to dig deeper into this because it's something I've been interested in. And something I think as an entity, as a human race, work, we, we're in this mindset of labor to promote the human, promote civilization, let's say that, right? So if we go back all the way to the beginning of time, right, labor was used to enhance civilization. Obviously, there were different forms of labor, but... We've all been accustomed that we're going to do something, get something in return, whether in this case it's financial incentives um, to promote the endeavors of an organization, business, or entity. Let's put it that way. In America, it's a capitalist, it's a capitalistic mindset. I'm not, again, this is not an economics class, right? Just give you high levels. I don't want you to, oh, yeah. No, it's it's a capitalist system in where in a true free market economy, right? The best organization. But again, our mindset, let's look back to our mindset. A mindset is we're going to work for an organization. They give us something. We give them something. The organization is going to make money. And then we continue making money in return. That paradigm has shifted. Now we have organizations seeing that, oh, I can make money without having all this overhead and the overhead being employees. I'll decrease the amount of employees that I retain because we have specialization, we have automation, automation, <laughs> we have automation. And now we have generative artificial intelligence to create things on our behalf to uh, make jobs more efficient, business processes more efficient? Do I really need 10,000 employees within my organization? I'm already seeing that I'm making billions upon billions of dollars with this amount of people. Let's reduce that staff and let's see how much more we can make with that staff reduction. Again, I haven't done any research on this. This is just based on my experiences 
through doing my MBA. Uh, right now, I'm going to finish my uh, Master's of Science in Management and Leadership um, within the next month, uh, by May probably. And then um, just uh, previous economics courses that I've taken, just my observations, not research back. I probably will do once I once I finish my my second master's. I probably will start doing some research, but that's going to take time. So I again just my observations and and probably some of the hypotheses that I'll put into uh, those theses will be theses that will be. Um, anybody watch PCU and the, the 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 young Asian woman that said uh, you know they, they, you know, he we lost all our theses anyway. Uh, I digress. PCU, great movie, underrated, great movie. Watch it if you haven't seen it. PCU. John Favreau's in it. So companies are now seeing we have more efficient business processes to make money. So why not reduce staff? Why not reduce headcount and see? Right. Let's see how much we can continue making, because it's harder and harder for larger organizations to continue to make money, double digit profits, which everybody loves, you know, shareholders, the board, blah, blah, blah. Because that shows that you're successful. And, and that's where I feel we're at at this point in time. We're at a, a crux in our civilization in where the capitalist system that we have in place today is trying to become more efficient. And we've been so, our mindset has been so ingrained that we need to work for money to be able to buy things. It's essentially what it is. Work for money to be, be able to buy things. What happens when there is no work for people, which is the case that we're facing right now, at least in the tech space? If there is no work to be had, then what do we do for our civilization to ensure that they can maintain a standard of living that, not what they're used to, right? They have to reduce that standard of living, but what, what, what can we do to, to help them? So I, I think that's where I'm at. But that, you know, that's a digression from what my original point of this video is. The point of the video is once you get that job, and, and here's the thing, you're, you lost your job, you had maybe a high level management job or whatever, go back down to an individual contributor level, someone that doesn't manage people, go back down, get settled in there, especially if you're in your tech. And, and sometimes I've, heard, I've, I've read that even if you're not in tech, you can do multiple jobs at one time, but go back down to an individual contributor level, ensure that your, your situation is stabilized, meaning that you're gonna be able to live within the means that you have within that individual contributor level, right? You may have to cut back things like Starbucks and go to you know concerts or whatever. You may have to do that for a minute and then look at getting another job. Obviously, this works best for companies that are work from home remote. Very, very competitive market at, at this point in time, because a lot of companies are not doing that. But it is possible to be able to do this. So I'm going to show you some resources in where and again, I'm transparent, Mr. Transparency, because it's it's really what I'm trying to to convey within within this show altogether. I try to be as transparent as possible. But for the most part, we're going to go through this process of being overemployed, which is a term. Now it's again, it's not overworked. It's overemployed. So once you get stable in a new role where you're probably an individual contributor, or if you've been an individual contributor, you were senior, drop yourself down again, within the, the context that you can do, because again, you're seeing, you're seeing job postings. So let's say you got laid off, excuse me, my eyes bother me. Let's say you got laid off. 
and and I, I you know listen to watch the other the video and scream do whatever you need to do to get that out of your system the the frustration the anger the sadness the depression get that out of your out of your system don't give yourself more than you know a couple of days in that that mindset change it and then look for another job that may not be a lead may not be a manager we're seeing that folks are dropping down on the level and for those that are starting out this is why you're running into these challenges because folks like myself if we got laid off we're just going to drop down to another level be an individual contributor we know we can do that and then get paid less than what we were getting paid before so now now this is where we're like all right so now i'm stable what do i need to do first next to get to get get back to where I was in my mindset. And, and I'm honestly thinking about this right now is fuck management, fuck leadership. Doesn't make any, if, if that's your mindset, like, yeah, I'm going to be the boss, blah, blah, blah. All, all, all good. Right. You want to be CEO, CIO, CISO, VP, whatever. That's fine. But for those that don't want to be that because it's just a rat race, it's just a grind, look at the opportunities within overemployment. And the overemployment doesn't have to be within the same industry, doesn't have to be within the same um, uh, trade, whatever, right? You can do something completely different. But knowing that you'll you'll have to figure out how to juggle that. So. So there's this whole community, and let me transition to this, called Overemployed, and there's a Discord for it, of course, overemployed.com, and there's a whole bunch of stories on, on success, on failures, there's job search forums, there's remote job board, there's interview games, off, you know, offer negotiations, and you'll notice that it's there are a lot of people in here. And there are a lot of people that are still doing multiple jobs that don't require a lot of their time, but they're being hired for the 40 hour work week, but they're own they're making their job more efficient so they can do these things and start researching if this is something that you can potentially do because this will change your mindset. And, and I've always said this, and I think early on in this series of the show, I said something I learned a very long time ago and has been reinforced by a few leaders within, within my, my career timeline is that you're the CEO of yourself. So if you treat yourself like a corporation, you're giving your time for money and if you're finding yourself being efficient in job one, and where for the most part, you probably do four hours a day of work, you still have another four hours to apply to someone else. Now you're like, ah, oh, Chuck, you know, I'm in meetings all day. Yeah, me too. Me too. But what the hell are you doing in those meetings? Are you actually doing anything in those meetings or are you just there to listen? If you're there to listen, there are other ways in where you can attend those meetings, but not have to worry about it. And one I actually like to use, right? Uh, is it? Yeah. I like to use, oh, what the hell? Wrong one, sorry. Yeah, otter.ai. I put this on my phone. Everybody has their phone. I hit record, put the phone next to the speaker, I have a speaker phone, and just, and then do something else. If I hear my name, I can just look back on the question on, cause it, it transcribes the, the meeting for you at the same time and boom. You can also in integrate this into your, your Teams meeting, your Google Meet your whatever, but then it's kind of weird cause it's another user. It says Otter AI. You don't want to do that, but um, I, I did this uh, two weeks ago when I was in the office. And I'll get to how you handle overemployment while we're going into the office. 
I was in the office and I, you know, I, I looked at my phone, pretending I was reading an email, hit record, put it down, right? Locked the screen and it recorded the entire thing. At the end of the, at the end of the meeting, I went back to my desk, it processed it. I went to the summary and it showed me some action items and it's not the best, but at least it gives you some insight into, into, and there are a bunch of other tools out there that, that allow you to do this, but Otter Data AI is a solution that I found very helpful. Now, obviously, there are different plans, but because I have my own LLC, uh, uh, you know, I, I expensed this on on the business account for for a year. Which, you know, to be fair, it wasn't that uh, expensive. I think if you go pricing, uh, let's just do this quickly before I go back into over, you know, ten dollars a month billed annually. You know, it wasn't. Oh, actually, I think I did the twenty dollars. Uh, because yeah, six thousand minutes a month compared to twelve hundred minutes, and I think I signed up when there was a, a uh, an incentive, but whatever. Um, it's yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, but I digress. So go back to o overemployed, right? You're like ah, Chuck, I'm in meetings. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do when when I'm in meetings at this other job? I gave you one solution. There are many other solutions you can do that. There's an apologies again. There's something wrong with my eye. Um, you're like, I don't know if I have this set up and, and things like that. And this is where this site will help you. And I started going through this, right, in terms of tech setup. How are, how are things, how are people handling certain things, right? Um, how are they doing multiple meetings at one time? Um, how are they doing... Um, multiple screens you know having job one job two here some people have four jobs i don't know how they do that <laughs> um but you know th this will walk you through how other people are doing it to possibly better prepare you again this is a very competitive space so my focus for you is get your job one situated standardized and then and then start digging through this, right? And you can even do this when you're at meetings, now that you know about otter.ai, if you never knew about it, just put it there and, and then, now you have to be discreet about recording meetings. Some of you knuckleheads out there, it's just like, you don't know how to be discreet. You obviously haven't lived in an area, in a situation where you had to be discreet. So please be discreet when you're doing these things. Um, so, so, you know, two cameras and things like that. It's just, you know, mouse jigglers, um, you know, mouse jiggling software, and, you know, virtual machines. If you're in tech, this is probably going to be a way to, to help you develop some of your skill sets a little bit faster, especially maybe if you're mid career, even early career. Um, if you're, and, and if you're early career, you may just, you know, say, F it, I'm going to, I'm going to go do what you need to do and need, need to do um, some. So, Overemployed.com is something I joined us uh, about a year, two years ago. I've uh, just been going through it, just keeping an eye on it um, and things like that. They also have a frequently asked questions. And what, what I want to focus on here is when you get, and this is what my biggest concern is. So when I get my job one, again, I have my my LLC, um, contracts go in the LLC, but a lot of people aren't doing many contracts anymore. They're doing W-2 because they know this is going on. So, and again, the LLC, contract jobs, you know, a month, two month projects. If you don't have an LLC, start one. Um, it's, it's fairly low cost. Um, there was a company I used. They've since changed their name. Um, and I think I found them on, um, yeah, it's called... Um, we go. It used to be called Ink File, and I enjoy it because it was really a one-shop stop. But they're called uh, Busy.com. Um, they they rebranded themselves. I don't know why, um, but it it essentially allows me to do one-stop shop for my LLC creation. Um, so I have an idea for another business for for my kids. I'm waiting for my oldest to turn 16 to then start an LLC for under her name. Um, or maybe my wife and and have her there. Um, so that way she can start doing her business in there. And then my other daughter, when she turned 16, started business in there. Um, it, this gives me a one-stop shopping where I can just create businesses within this one portal and I'll have all my businesses there. It'll notify you certain things. It can be um, uh, an agent for you um, in the state that you, you, you create your business in. So it, right now it's, um, 
it's what I'm using. Obviously, they're different. Uh, and, and look, I'm not providing any affiliate links or anything like that. I'm not doing that because that's not what I'm about. I'm just trying to show you what I've used to to help people out. And if you want to be an affiliate, that's fine. I, I'm not, you know, poo pooing that, but I'm just saying these are these are some of the things that I'm using to 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 do my my business my LLC so I can expense some things, get some contracts um, for small projects here and there. That way, I don't have to worry about um, worry about uh, any any W two or things like that. But now that a lot of companies know about this uh, dual jobs. Uh, or multiple jobs and people doing LLCs and things like that, um, which again is not against the law. It's not against the law to have your own business, uh, but in certain industries like mine, I have to be careful because I'm supposed to say, "Hey, I have these outside business interests," uh, and I have. I said, "Hey, here's my company. This is what we do. It doesn't conflict. There's no conflict of interest in what we're doing compared to what I'm doing." So. You know, again, financial industry a little bit different, but ethically, do you have to tell them? Yeah, yeah but if yeah, are corporations that ethical? Again, you, you do you, but my point is, I'm looking at this information on what happens during background checks and and things like that, and as I go through this, right, I start learning about all that data that people collect on us. You know, there was, there was a, a session of Congress in the United States yesterday where uh, a Republican congressman, again, I shouldn't even say the, the party that they're affiliated with because they're all the same. Forget your beliefs on what the difference between the two. They're all the same. Uh, they were talking about um, TikTok and how TikTok collects all this data on U.S. nationals, and China is using it. Meanwhile, the government allows folks like Lexus Nexus and Equifax to collect all this information on us that we have no access to. So, I started going through this, understanding how background checks work, understanding where our data is. And I found things like the work number. I'm like, what the hell is this? Right? Provides employment information. You can get your a free copy of report. Then there's ADP. Obviously, a lot of people may know ADP. Sterling, first advantage. Right? There's all these people collecting data on you and your jobs history and things like that. I'm like, what the fuck? So you can go to LexisNexis and hey, oh, I want to suppress my information. Oh, hold on a second, buddy. <laughs> You need to prove that you're a victim of identity theft, you're a law enforcement or public official, you're a risk of physical harm, right? S submit it. What? This is my data. Why do I need to go through all this if I want to suppress that information? So LexisNexis offer, also um, offers their subsidiaries, um, and I haven't gone through all of them, but there, there are ways to get that information suppressed or frozen or things like that. Um, so the work number um, offers from Equifax the ability to freeze your data so that when people are doing inquiries about your job history, especially for W-2 jobs, again, going back to overemployed, you can actually freeze your data. So people, it's like a credit freeze, same thing. Freeze your data and things like that. But there are so many more companies. And as I pull the layers back from this smelly onion there's so many other companies and lexus nexus is the biggest one where they have so many subsidiaries that collect data about you that it's mind-numbing and as i as i continue digging down and pulling the layers through this peeling the onion i should say um, I'll, I'll share that information, right? This is going to be an ongoing series. It may not be the next episode, but, it'll, you know, as I dig deeper and as I investigate this process, it, I will share the information. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is figure out, you know, how do I freeze that data, right? Just let my, you know, don't, don't, don't let people see what, what's going on. Um, and I don't even know how long that takes. Uh, so overemployed.com i think you should check this out it's uh there's a fact frequently asked questions uh success stories there's resources and things like that here we go with a tech setup this is the the website version of the discord again obviously the discord will allow you to interact with other people yes there's a cost to this but 
you know, the cost only allows you to get into, um, I'm not even a pro. Am, am I, I don't even think I'm a pro. Uh, yeah, starter. Yeah, here we go. Water cooler, starter. I'm a starter, right? So you'll get access to water cooler, chill zone. Um, and that's probably it. Um, but a lot of this stuff, right? Can I do this? No, I can't. So I can't get here, but I can still do this. And it's plenty to start off with. If you want to get a little bit more in depth and, and, and talk about other things, then you can pay for, for the thing. But I did the starter one. Um, and I do have some insight into, into other things. But yeah, it, it is what it is. So overemployed.com, check it out. Read through it. Look at some of the articles, see if this is something that you're willing to invest your time in learning how to do and dealing with certain things. Um, if you're something, if you're someone that is uh, very technical, uh, you have some technical ability, even if you're not in tech, look through it, see if it's something you could do. But it, I'm definitely going to start going through this and figuring out um, what I need to do to freeze my, my employment data, because I think overall it's beneficial. I, I think, you know, you know Understanding what information is out there on you is key because it's it's getting crazy out there. You know, with 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 people saying that TikTok's aggregating all this data um, from from you. You know, Meta's doing the same thing. Google's been doing it since inception, since its in inception. We heard about Amazon Alexa collecting all that voice data and storing it in their in their environment. Oh no, we didn't do that. We didn't. Yeah, you did. So if you think that it's just TikTok and things like that, you know, blow through the noise. There's a reason why the government, the U.S. government, doesn't want TikTok on our phones. Because then the Chinese government can leverage that to really persuade the U United States, the, U the U.S. Uh, nationalists, the people, citizens of the United States, say, this is what your government's doing to you. This is what your government's doing to you. Again, I, I, I think I think I noted this before, but there's a book out called The Hundred Year War. Let me see. I have it on I have it on my Kindle. Um, I read it a couple of years. Oh, The Hundred Year Marathon: China's Secret Strategy to Replace America as a Global Superpower. In China, the Chinese people are very smart people very very smart people they know what they're doing china's been around way longer than the united states and i feel like the united states is kind of that frat boy you know those frat boys that are like seniors in college and they don't want to let go of that frat boy mentality right meanwhile the china the chinese government even though you know we don't align politically right because i don't believe in 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 that, that government structure that they have i feel like a lot of people are oppressed again just my experience because i'm a you know I'm a spoiled united states citizen but but to china is kind of that, that that wise old professor just sitting in the background waiting for the frat boy to realize their mistakes right um so the united states is that frat boy senior year of college or university doesn't want to let go may stay another year because why not? They're having so much fun. They can do whatever they want. They understand the system. Um, so, so that's that's what you know. Again, my observations and and take on that. You may disagree. And that's fine. But this, the whole point of this conversation is really looking into once you get back on your feet after a layoff. And yes, you may not be at the level that you're at. Don't look at going climbing back up the ladder build your enterprise yourself and be the CEO of yourself, right? Focus on how you can change your mindset to breaking out of that mentality of, oh, I need to work at this job to make money, have a single source of income. Have another one. Start your own LLC. Do contracts here and there. Again, contracts are tight because it's, you know, it's a little bit more challenging because it's a competitive market, but still there are, there are op opportunities out there that you just need to seek and, and work for. So look at overemployed.com, see if it's something that you do. As I dig deeper into this arena or, or mentality, I'll, I'll share my experiences and maybe I get a, another job.
we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please, 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 if you have any questions or feedback, insights, whatever, just comment here. Um, I'm on YouTube, Rumble. Uh, I, you know, I'm on TikTok, but I don't post much on TikTok around this. I just kind of do my goofy shit. Um, but, um, you know, social-media at the itxp.com is probably the best way to reach me. Um, good old email because then it stores in my email box and I know I can go back to it. You know, the other social media platforms, it gets lost very quickly. So enjoy. I hope you get back on your speed. I hope this helps you in any way. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. And thank you for allowing me to be as transparent as possible with this, with this green shirt. Take care.